Hey gang, we're back in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at Forest Home Cemetery. We've been here before, we did a live stream back a few months ago. Yeah, part 14. Anyway, we're here today to tell an old-fashioned Victorian murder story from England. Why are we here? Well, the man that committed the crime there and was tried there is buried here. A really interesting murder story. We're actually in the section, the very far south side of the cemetery here, not where all the big fancy mausoleums are. I don't want to say this is the poor man's section, but it's kind of little tricky to get to but anyway we found the grave let's take a walk I want to thank Lacey T one of our Instagram friends and subs for suggesting this wow this is this is one of my favorite kind of stories to tell so let's get on with this walk there's still some decent statuary here and monuments but yeah a murder story from the 1800s in England it was a woman, an elderly woman, actually. Her name was Emma Keys, and it was around, she was around the age of 68. She lived in a place called Babacombe, just outside of Torquay, Devon, England. She was apparently a former lady-in-waiting to Queen Victoria, and the monarch had visited her actually in 1846. Now on November 15th, 1884, Miss Keyes' cook was awoken by the smell of smoke. And after they looked around, they found out that part of the house was on fire. And it was accelerating pretty quick. Now, there was a man named John Lee he was her footman, and he ran to a nearby pub to raise the alarm. And he was yelling, Miss Keys, Miss Keys is burnt to death. Now, according to a report in the local Devon newspaper called The Express and Echo on November 17th, 1884, they had described the scene that onlookers were met with in the dining room. And it said, a horrible discovery was made. Lying on the floor was the lifeless body of Miss Keese. There was a deep gash across her throat. The right side of her head was smashed in. Her right leg and foot and other parts of her body were burnt and charred. Now, once the fire was extinguished, of course, everybody started asking the big questions and the murder investigation commenced. Now John Lee, of course, quickly became a suspect and soon thereafter he was arrested under the suspicion of murder. Now once he was arrested, they really thought it was odd because the remark that he made, he basically said, quote unquote, oh, on suspicion, that's all right. Now, despite the fact that the murder weapon was not found and there was a lack of motive and there was no blood found in his room, John Lee was charged and sent to trial. Evidence against him was purely circumstantial. They lined up the case. Now he did have a criminal record and it was reported that his socks smelled of paraffin. So it's a little suspect, but still that's not a lot of evidence. Miss Keyes had employed him to quote unquote, redeem his character. And he reportedly, quote unquote, never had an angry word with his mistress. But again, the clue here is that he did have some troubles with his character. Well, in February 1885, Lee faced his trial 
and I'm going to quote that they reported there was, quote, unquote, an apparent error of indifference to the serious nature in which he was placed. Although his appearance has undergone a decided improvement. They said there was a very large throng, a big crowd at the courtroom, and they went through the trial. They presented the evidence, and John Lee was found guilty, and he was sentenced to death. The Bath Chronicle and Weekly Gazette on February 12, 1885, gives notice of his impending execution. Quote, unquote, John Lee, convicted of the murder of his mistress, Miss Keys at the Babacomb. He will be executed at Exeter on the 23rd instant. However, what's interesting is when it was all said and done, they got the gallows set up, everything was ready, and he stepped there on the scaffold to meet his maker, John Lee. They put the hangman's noose on him. He stood over the trap door and they gave the signal. And the executioner pulled the lever and nothing happened. Pulled the lever again, nothing happened. They asked him to step off, which he did. And they tested the equipment. And it worked perfectly. It worked perfectly. Well, got back on again. What do you think happened? Pulled the lever. Nothing. Everybody was aghast. Everybody was in shock. And they said, let's, we got to call this off. <laughs> it's divine intervention. That's right. So, he got off because they did not put him back up on that scaffold. And maybe it was because they thought that would be a curse. But for whatever reason, back in those days, people were a lot more superstitious than today. And he was commuted to, if you will, a life sentence. He later claimed in a letter to his sister that, quote unquote, it was the Lord. It was the Lord's hand that would not let the law be carried out. He, of course, thereafter got the nickname, the man they couldn't hang. Although some people viewed him as the man that shouldn't hang. He successfully petitioned for his release from prison in 1907, and it is believed that he died in a Devon workhouse during the 1940s. Now Devon in Britain, and anywhere in Britain, a workhouse was an institution where those unable to support themselves financially were offered accommodation and employment. In Scotland, they were usually known as poor houses. So you have to wonder what happened. We are at the grave of John Lee. Now there are several Lees here. Well, there's three. We have John, and we have Evelyn, and we have Adeline. Adeline was born in 1875. Evelyn was born in 1914. John was born, and this confirms this is when he was born in 1864. There's no death date, 
like the others. Adeline has no death date either, but Evelyn here to the left, she was born 1914, passed in 1933, but there's no death date here. We do know that he died in 1945. But I ask, I say, what, what is he doing here? Why? He must have emigrated to the United States. You have to wonder. Is history, is history incorrect on this? So, RIP to, to John. Never know what happened here and also rest in peace to Miss Keys. But I really wonder, I mean, this, this has to be his grave because it's too coincidental that birth date being on there of 1864. How did he end up in the United States? And what do you think? Do you think it was divine intervention? Could be something. I mean, it's really eerie to think about. All right, rest in peace. Rest in peace, John. Rest in peace, Miss Keys.